Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar and member of the board of directors of the Tulsa Symphony. And we're here today with our musician moment and the amazing bassoonist, contrabassoonist, and we're going to learn more about a sub contrabassoon here shortly, <laughs> Richard Bobo. How are you, sir? I'm okay. How, how about you? I'm good. Well I'm... I, well, I'm good. I'm good. We're good, right? Um, what uh, I got to ask you first off, I want to know about your last name. Okay. What's its derivation? Uh, so, uh, all my life, we had grown up uh, uh, knowing that uh, uh, my family, uh, it, it's actually a French last name. It was originally spelled B-E-A-U-B-A-U. -A -A oh, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. I wonder. Yeah, uh, yeah. People uh, uh, kicked out of uh, France after the Edict of Nantes in 1680. Oh. Um but we recently did a DNA test and found out that we're probably not Bobos at all. Uh, we're probably actually Scroggins. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but uh, still have the last name. I just say, good I, last name. Are you thinking about changing your last name? No. No. Okay. No, good. No, no, good. No. Good. Good. I like yeah. Bobo. I like Bobo. I think that's that's a great name. Um, so you have been with the Tulsa Symphony, golly, right since almost the beginning. Maybe the beginning. I, I was a last minute hire before the first concert. That's um, right. That's right. There yeah. was a, uh, there was a, a an, uh, the, the woman who was going to play contra bassoon or sorry, the woman or uh, Susie Brown, our, our sure. long time, wonderful second bassoonist, uh, wasn't able to do the concert. So the woman who was going to play, uh, contra bassoon, uh, who was subbing on contra bassoon moved up to second. So they needed someone to fill in on Contra on Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which right. um, is a great piece to kind of to demonstrate yourself on Contra bassoon. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's Beethoven Five is one of those wonderful pieces where you're almost certain that at some point the conductor is going to say, "Okay, we just need strings and Contra bassoon," here. <laughs> um, and. They haven't been able to get rid of me since. That's awesome. Well, you're a, a part of the family. That's that's tremendous. Um, I, I'm curious how one comes to the bassoon and contra bassoon. How how did you select that instrument, and how did you decide to go down the musical path? Okay. Well, so in sixth grade, you know the, the the band directors they come around and they ask everybody, "What instrument do you want to play?" And I told them I was absolutely certain I want to play trumpet. Okay. Um, and they said, uh, we think you're a lipstick, so you're going to play trombone. <laughs> uh, so I played trombone for about a year and a half, okay. and I was really bad at it. And I still believe that their goal was to put me on something quieter. Um, so <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to play bassoon, and I said, I didn't know enough to say no. So I mean, I'd never really heard of the instrument, so right. I said, sure. And uh, it worked out well. Uh, my 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 poor band director. I think he, uh, 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 Doug Blevins, uh, my my band director. I think he thought he had stumbled onto some secret recipe for finding you know bassoonists. Uh -huh. um, so he kept on trying to switch trombone players. And it never worked <laughs> again. Um, but I mean, it, it can work. I mean, one of the one of the the best young bassoonists ever. Uh, uh, given lessons start on trumpet. So good bassoonists can come from anywhere. It's just trombone is not necessarily the easiest to switch. I, I would imagine. Yes. Just listening as I've watched people perform on a, on a trombone. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad you made the switch because you do an amazing job. Uh, thank you. So um, I know you have a passion. Uh, we can talk about a lot of things, but I want to talk about the sub contra bassoon. Okay. I, I think our audience needs a little bit of history, if you don't mind, because um, this goes back to like the eighteen late eighteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yes and no. Okay. So, like in the in the late eighteen hundreds, someone built an instrument that was about the same size as a contrabassoon. Okay. Um, and they called it the sub contrabassoon for marketing purposes. Okay. And the instrument wasn't successful, so it became a footnote. But then over the years, it developed into this myth of an instrument a full octave below 
the Contra bassoon, which, you know, right. had never existed. Sure. Um, you know, so I grew up um, reading about this myth mm-hmm. or reading of this about this myth as fact. I mean, my sure. my childhood copy of the Guinness Book of World Records clearly listed a sub bassoon with a range to B flat negative one. Um, okay. And when I finally got to college, I started asking about it, you know, because you know, I was a dumb college kid, you know, <laughs> hey, maybe the University of Arkansas has a sub bassoon just lying around yeah. that no one's played in a while. Um, but, uh, you know, long story short, I found out that, uh, well, that it doesn't actually exist. And I spent, you know, a couple of a decade or so waiting for someone else to build one. In that time, I spent some, uh, some years doing uh, machining at a fabrication shop. Uh, and eventually I realized no one else was going to make one. So I might as well do it myself. You know, there's only so long you can wait for someone else to do something. That's right. Good point. And so, and so where are we today? Where are you today? Uh, slowly, uh, it's coming together. If, uh, hold on. Hold sure. on a second. Sure. Already, that's impressive. Already, that's impressive. Wow. So this this is just one small piece of it. Wow. Wow. Uh, and believe it or not, this piece is going to be responsible for playing two notes. Low B flat and low A. Okay. Um, hold on. I wonder if I can... This is risky. It's okay. We take risks. <laughs> Aha. Are, are yes. you seeing a... Uh, I'm seeing a drawing, yes. Yeah, so this is what it's going to look like eventually. Wow. Okay, and I see the part that you're holding now there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, right over here. So what is that, like two and a half, three times the size of a... Of a normal bassoon? Uh, it'll be uh, four times as long okay. Okay. as a uh, bassoon, and then twice as long as a contra bassoon. Okay, okay, twice as long. Okay, wow. So, like, if, if you've ever uh, been to a, uh, an organ concert, sure. and they've, uh, they've pulled out all the stops, I mean, literally, literally that's where the literally. expression comes from, the right. organ. Um, right. And you get that incredibly low sound. I mean, that's the 32-foot register. That's the sub bass register. Okay. And okay. it's uh, the orchestra has not had access to that sound. Right. Um, you know, when composers want to use it, they have to write an organ part. And, of course, you know, at some point, every concert hall of note had a, you know, decent organ in it. But that's not the case anymore. Right, right. So uh, a lot of times these parts, like, you know, planets, there's all of these solos in the 32-foot register Mm -hmm. in Saturn and Neptune uh, that just get, you know, they get played on a little keyboard, like two octaves higher. Right. uh, Because we don't have those organs with 32-foot stops in them anymore. So I figured the the subcontra bassoon was the the kind of the best chance to bring this register to the orchestra. That is awesome. I cannot wait for you to finish this project. Um, I bet you our viewers can can learn more if they visit a website of yours. Yes, uh, if you just go to subcontrabassoon.com, uh, you can you can see uh, more information, more more pretty graphics, and uh, there's also a, a, U- a link to my YouTube channel there. It's okay. been a little bit weird late. My YouTube channel has been a little bit weird since quarantine started. Right. Um, just trying some trying some stuff uh about a week ago i just streamed two hours of contra bassoon scales people <laughs> watched for some reason i don't know <laughs> people are looking for all kinds of diversions right now so uh why not why not two hours of contra bassoon that is awesome that's awesome um so i think i now know sort of what you do in your off time 
but uh, but you perform with several symphonies, several orchestras, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you mm -hmm. teach. Do you teach some? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm the uh, what what what's the what's the title? The artist instructor of bassoon and oboe at Northeastern State University in Tahlequah. Sure. Okay. Um, which. You know, it's it's one of those uh, adjunct positions. So some semesters, I'm going to Tahlequah once a once a week to teach lessons. Right. Other semesters, I don't have any students, so I'm just a listing on the website. I gotcha. I gotcha. What uh, besides the Tulsa Symphony? Where else are you performing? What are uh, you so I I've, I've played uh, with the orchestra here in town. Uh, I, I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, beautiful. So I, I drive over for Tulsa concerts, and A I play with uh, the Symphony in Northwest Arkansas. Right, and, right. And uh, that's actually who uh, the uh, the contrabassoon that I use most often mm -hmm. over here. Uh, that's actually the the Symphony in Northwest Arkansas's instrument. Since they're in town, uh, it's con convenient for the contrabassoon to just stay with me. Sure. Um, uh, the, uh, I also play with the um, Arkansas Philharmonic, which right. is up in Bentonville, uh, right, the right. music librarian there, and play second bassoon. Nice. And uh, then I, I do uh, a lot of subbing in uh, Fort Smith Symphony. That uh -huh. was actually my, my first orchestral gig was playing a contrabassoon with the Fort Smith Symphony. Okay. And I try to make time uh, to go back whenever I can. Mm -hmm. And then I've been doing some subbing in uh, the Arkansas Phil, uh, sorry, the Arkansas Symphony in Little Rock. Oh, nice. For the past several seasons, both on second bassoon and contrast. Okay, sure. So I think I know the answer to this question now. With all that you have going, do you have a, such a thing as downtime? Uh, yeah, I, I, I still fa manage to, to waste a lot of time. Um, <laughs> I bet it's not wasted. I bet it's not wasted. But well, uh, you know, I, I, I think that we, we we're not machines. We we have to make time to to relax. Sure. And, uh, you know. So So what do you like to do when you are relaxing? Uh I mean I I, I biked a decent mm -hmm. amount. Uh maybe not so much with the with the, the pandemic because uh, uh when I have gone biking, it's really crowded. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. It's like everybody in Arkansas just decided, well, <laughs> just go to, the, go to the trail. Right. Um, so it kind of feels like it might be defeating some of the purpose. Well, listen, um, Richard, um, it's been really fun chatting with you today. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I've, I've learned a lot, and I know our audience has as well. So uh, I'm going to invite uh, our audience to sort of sit back and, and enjoy a, a performance from you. So what are you, what are you going to play for us today? Uh, this is a, a piece originally written for uh, uh, bassoon and cello. Okay. Uh, several seasons back, I played it on um, two contra bassoons uh, with uh, Sue Nigro. She's a well. If there is such a thing as a world famous contra bassoon soloist, she's it. She's it. Okay. Uh, we played a duet recital at uh, the International Double Reed Society convention, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, but for this time, for this time, I'm going to be playing it on bassoon and contra bassoon okay. on the bottom. So this is uh, uh, Mozart's um, Sonata in B flat for um, bassoon and cello. Uh, this is uh, the, the last half of the first movement. All right. Well, that will be really, really great to hear. So, Richard Bobo, thank you so much for your time today, for sharing it with us. And uh, oh, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll sit back and relax and, as they say, enjoy the show. You take good care, and we'll look forward to seeing you again in person very soon. Yes, you too.